Hey guys, today we're talking about how to multiply and divide polynomials in Algebra 2. We'll go over a few multiplication examples like this and also how to divide using long division and synthetic division. Before we get started, press that like button for good luck. Let's go. The most common multiplication problems in Algebra 2 look something like this with trinomials, but let's start off easy with a distribution problem to build up to it. Basically, when you see something being multiplied to terms in parentheses, you need to distribute. The first thing you do is take that first term and multiply it by the first term inside the parentheses. Just remember when you're multiplying, you multiply the coefficients. So one times two equals two and add the exponents when you multiply variables. So two plus three equals five. Next, you take that first term again, then multiply it to the second term inside the parentheses. We're going to add all these terms together and simplify if necessary, although there's nothing really to simplify here, so this is actually our final answer. Now, what happens if we add another term? You might have learned the FOIL method in Algebra 1, but it kind of confuses me even more, so I pretty much just think of it as an extension of distribution. We're going to start by doing the same thing, take the first term here and multiply it by the first term here. Next, take that same first term and multiply it by the second term here. This is where we ended last time, but since we have an extra term now, let's take that second term and do the whole thing over again. So multiply it by the first term and then the second term. Once we're done, let's add everything up and simplify. That is our answer. Finally, the problem we've all been waiting for, multiplying trinomials. They're kind of tedious, but just be super methodical about it so you don't miss any terms. We're again going through the same process. Take the first term and multiply it to every term in the second set of parentheses. Next, take the second term and multiply it to everything in the second set of parentheses. Finally, now take the third term and multiply it to everything again. Basically, no matter how many terms you have in your polynomials, you're going to be doing the same process. Now we're going to add everything up and simplify, which will probably take a while. I usually start with the highest exponent, see if there are any other terms with the same exponent value, and combine them. If there isn't another term with the same exponent, just leave it. After simplifying the entire thing, this is our final answer. Now for division. We're first going to use long division to solve this problem. You're dividing this expression by this expression. Our first step is just to set up the problem. You're going to take this first expression and put it on the inside of the radical and make sure you also leave placeholders for each term that isn't there. For example, in our expression, we have our term with the highest degree, which is x cubed. Then we have x squared, but then it just skips to the number two. So to make it easier on us when we're dividing, we're going to actually leave a zero x just as a placeholder. Now let's write the second expression on the outside. Once we have it set up, let's just look at the first term of each expression, which is x and six x cubed. We're basically going to divide these two terms in our head, so 6x cubed divided by x. Or you can also think of it like x times what term equals 6x cubed. Well, x times 6x squared equals x cubed, so let's write that down. It's best to make sure that all of your exponents line up, so I'm going to put it here over this other x squared term. For the next step, let's multiply what we just got by everything on the outside. 6x squared times x equals 6x cubed. And again, because it's a cubed value, let's put that here under this other cubed value. Then 6x squared times 1 equals 6x squared. 
Our next step is to subtract these expressions. The 6x cubes will cancel out when you subtract them, which is exactly what we wanted. We should be canceling out a term each time or else we're doing our second step wrong. Negative 7x squared minus 6x squared is negative 13x squared. And don't forget all of the rest of these terms. Let's just bring them down since there's nothing to subtract them with. Now we're just left with this expression that's a little shorter than what we started off with. And we're going to repeat steps two through four. Let's just do one more round together. So let's look at our first terms again. X times what equals negative 13 X squared? Negative 13 X. Now let's multiply it out with the terms on the outside and subtract the expressions. Eventually we'll end up with negative 11 at the end and there's nothing we can multiply x with to get negative 11 unless you want to get into negative fractions, which we don't want to do. So this means that this expression up top is our answer and this number that we're left with is our remainder. We'll format the remainder by putting the number that's left over as the numerator of a fraction and this outside expression in the denominator. This is our final answer. All right, now we're going to use synthetic division to do the same exact problem. The first step again is just to set it up. We're going to put the first expression on the inside, which is the same as long division, but for synthetic division, we just use the coefficients. For the outside part, it's a little different. We're actually putting the root of the second expression on the outside. Usually for synthetic division, you'll get an expression in this x minus a format with no coefficient in front of the x. So you can actually just take the last number and flip the sign. In this case, it's negative one. Now we're going to bring down the first number. Let's multiply it with a number on the outside and you'll get negative six. We'll put that underneath the second term. Now let's add. Just note that this is a little different than long division where you're subtracting. And you just keep repeating steps three and four until you get to the very last number. I'll do one more just as an example. So negative 13 times negative one equals 13. Then zero plus 13 equals 13 and repeat. When you get to the end, this is the last number, negative 11, and this is the remainder. Everything to the left, these are the coefficients to your final answer, so you just need to add in the variables. This is our final answer. All right, thanks everyone for watching. If this was useful, be sure to give this a thumbs up and share with your friends, teachers, I don't know, parents, and I'll see you in the next one.